I wanted to give you a third example just so we can remember two different methods of factoring we haven't used yet, namely difference of cubes, which is going to be at the top right here. Now, how do I know that? Well, 1 is a perfect cube, right? 1 times 1 times 1. 27 is a perfect cube. 3 times 3 times 3. And x has a power of 3. That's obviously a perfect cube. And since it's minus, we will be using the difference of cubes formula. Down here, um, you, can't, you can factor it, but not in a form that will be rational. Like, it, it'll, it'll, it'll just look weird. So, and that's because 7 is not a perfect square. 2x, we're obviously going to leave. Remember, whenever you have four terms, more than likely to be used factoring by grouping. So right off the bat, we will pull out a negative 2x squared from the first two, like that. On the second two, we'll pull out a minus 7. So you're left with negative 2x squared times 3x minus 1 minus 7 times 3x minus 1. That forms one fact, uh, two factors, 3x minus 1 and negative 2x squared minus 7. And again, that is the um, bottom factorization. So it will be replaced by that. The difference of cubes, um, I'll let you guys use your notes on that. Remember, it's a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared. Uh, what would your a and b be? What would your a be? One. And what would b become? 3x, yes. So in that formula, you'll plug in 1 and 3x. Remember, it's a minus b, a squared plus ab plus b squared. And it will become that, OK? So there's a minus b. a squared would be 1, right? Plus ab is 3x times 1 plus b squared. 3x squared is 9x squared. And so, um, again, this, this thing comes up where, all right, first of all, the 2x and the 2x squared minus 7 do not cancel. Sometimes, l let me explain that, because a lot of students like to try to cancel those things since they both have a 2x in them. But the reason they can't cancel is because this also has a minus 7. Now, if it was just 2x squared, you could reduce that. But this has another number next to it. You can't do that. You have to leave it that way. Okay? But here's what I want to point out for this example. This one has a 1 minus 3x. This one has a 3x minus 1. 1 minus 3x and 3x minus 1. It'll become negative 1 because this is still, that's going to be a number, right? Like if I plug in 3, I'd get 9, right? What's 1 minus 9? Negative 8. On the bottom, I'd get 9 minus 1, which is 8. It's still going to become negative 1. You can put it wherever you want. You can put it on the top or bottom. It actually won't matter. That's a good point. But anyways, if you wanted to show it, you'd still pull out technically negative 1 out of the top. That's going to flip and become 3x minus 1, and you'll see that the 3x minus 1s will cancel, and you'll be left with a negative 1 on top. I'm not sure what happened to that fraction bar on the right. There should still be a fraction bar right here. Um, so it's going to become that. It's the same thing. It's the same slide. Um, and they'll cancel and just be left with a negative 1. And now you're left with this. You're left with, uh, you still got the negative 2x squared minus 7 on the bottom. Now these two look similar, right? But they're not the same. So you can't, you can't really square those because one is a negative 2x squared and the other one is a 2x positive 2x squared. Now from this point, um, you know, th the question is, do you multiply the top out? Do you multiply the bottom out? And I would say you don't necessarily have to since they're already factored. It depends on, basically, if I were to multiply the top out, how many terms would you be left with? You'd still have three, right? Because you just have three here. So even if you distribute the 2x, you'll have three on the top. On the bottom, if I multiply that out, I'll have three terms. I'll leave it up to you guys if you want to multiply them out or not. For this particular example, I ended up multiplying them out. So basically, I distribute the negative and the 2x into the top. In the bottom, you have to FOIL, right? First, first outer, inner, last. So it would look like this. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. So anyway, the top would become negative 2x minus 6x squared minus 18x cubed. In order to multiply the bottom, again, you'd have to FOIL that, which I'll show you in a second. OK, so let's FOIL the bottom out. Let me done. Um, here's what I was talking about. When you FOIL the bottom out, 
okay? You end up with plus 14x squared and minus 14x squared, which ends up becoming zero. So when you fold the bottom, you get negative 4x to the fourth plus 49, which is a little bit simpler than two sets of factors. So that's why I ultimately decided to, to multiply it out. If you want to, you can ask me. If you're working on the worksheet, should I multiply this out? I can help you with that. But typically, the way to know is, is it going to be simpler when you multiply it out? If not, you should probably just leave it as separate factors.